Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Scary Stories to Tell from the Res. I'm your host, Jordan Lone Bear. And for those of you that are just joining us, Scary Stories to Tell from the Res is a paranormal podcast that focuses on stories, mainly the scary ones. From the experiences within the indigenous communities, or more specifically, the reservations. So come sit down with me by the glow of the fire as we share stories that our elders warned us not to talk about. But if you get a little scared, don't forget, you can always scoot a little closer. But just make sure that it's still me that you're sitting next to. Let's kick the show off today by talking about our first story. Now, this story comes to us from right here in the Uinta Basin, in the Uinta and Ore Reservation that I've grown up in. Now, the person telling the story wanted to remain anonymous. So, with that being said, let's move on to her story. One night, about three years ago, we went up to the mountains for a little shindig with some people. We were in the area where there's a little campsite with pine trees all around. No one around, no one else camping, just us enjoying the music and watching everyone have fun. Well, the fire started getting low, and no one brought firewood. So me and my boyfriend and two others had gotten out of the back of my truck to go look for some firewood within the said pine trees. As we were looking, my boyfriend flashed his phone flashlight up, and at that moment, I looked up and seen something about a hundred feet from us, about six, seven to seven feet tall, white from head to toe. It stopped in its tracks, like that Bigfoot picture. My boyfriend paused and said, Babe, when he said that, the head twitched a little bit more, and it took a step. I said, Nope. At this point, I couldn't believe what we were seeing together, because I thought it was just me. I got chills, turned around, and hopped back into my truck. After that, I stayed in the car until my friends were ready to leave. Thanks for that story. Now, what was it that you think you might have saw? Clearly, you guys disrupted it. I often hear stories about a white or pale humanoid-like creature wandering, especially in the areas with forestation or at least large clearing areas. So could it be a ghost? A spirit? Maybe even a shapeshifter? Or could we be looking at a bald Bigfoot? Either way, I'm glad you survived to tell the tale. Let's move on to our next story. A lot of the stories that I do have, like I said, focus in on the area that I'm at. Out here in the Uinta Basin area, which is where the Skinwalker Ranch is located. There is a lot of stories that come from the oil field out here. Now I have a couple myself, but let's take one that was submitted to me through a close friend of mine. Once again, I'm going to keep their name anonymous because I'm not sure whether they want their name out there. One night, I was hauling water up a Vantaquin Canyon, working all night. We were driving transport semi and shuttled water up to a location to a frack tank around 2 a.m. We got up to the top of the canyon, which was clear up on top of the forested area where it was dark without the lights on the truck. So myself and other semi-truck drivers were standing around, talking. Everyone had turned their lights off and stood in the dark talking. At that time, the air got really cold where we were all standing. A bobtail truck came into the frack tank. Once he got loaded, the bobtail truck pulled off the location and started for the drilling rig, and all of a sudden, the bobtail truck slammed on its brakes. He stopped really quick and came to a stop. We were all standing next to the frack tanks. As he was backing up, one of the other drivers said, Hey, did you see that? Everyone said no. He said, look like something big, and the shadows took off into the trees. We all laughed and thought he was just seeing things. Then the bobtail driver got out of his truck and said, What did you guys want? We all looked at each other puzzled and said nobody wanted anything. He said because someone tall was running by the side banging on the door. 
Everyone just looked at each other and said, nope, it wasn't us. And then we thought about it. What the other driver said about the shadow. So everyone turned their flashlights and headlamps all on and took off to our semi-trucks and turned on all of our headlights. Work lights and the rest of the night, we kept all of our lights on and kept watching for something. And all that night seemed like someone was watching us. <laughs> Thanks for that. Like I said, working in the oil field, especially here in the Uinta Basin areas, we're surrounded by heavily wooded mountain-like areas. And we all know just how spirits and creatures of the night like to be incognito. Every now and then, being on the oil field it always feels like there's something or someone out there watching you. I know I've had my fair share of run-ins with extra scary things out there. It's usually not something that you do to stand in the dark, especially up in a canyon area. It makes me want to share the story that I had. Just as the last story was talking about, I actually worked in the oil field as well. One night when I was hauling water, I remember pulling up to a location, and usually you back up to the tanks with your work lights on, especially because I was working at night. You back up to the tank, and you climb up, gauge the tank, and then you come back down, hook up your hoses, and open up the valves. Well, this night, as I was hooking up my valves and connecting everything, I walked to the tank to open it up. But as I was walking, I noticed something, that my lights were hitting the tank, and it created this shadowy outline of the tank. But there was also a light that was going to the back of the tank that you could see behind it. Well, some reason, I looked, and I saw a very tall-like figure leaning up against the tank. And as it was leaning against the tank, I stared at it. And as I was staring, I noticed that I couldn't see through it, like it was a shadow. As I stood there examining what it was, as if it leaned forward off of the tank where it had been sitting, or perched. Now this thing had to have been at least 10 feet tall. Because the welts on the tanks are marked at every 5 feet, and this thing was standing just at the second weld of the tank. As it moved, my entire body went cold. Now, I knew I had to get that load. So I walked as quickly as I could to the valve, opened it, quickly walked away. Now, if my grandmother taught me anything, especially those of you that live on the reservation with elders, they tell you, don't bother with it. Don't pay it any attention. And that's exactly what I did. But there was no way that I was going to stand out there with it. So I opened up the valves, turned my gaze away from the tanks, walked very briskly back to the truck, jumped in, and that's where I stayed the entire load. I had turned on every light that I could in the truck, the brights, the work lights, the signal lights, everything that I could. Once the load was finished, I walked back to the back of the truck to finish my load. Well, as I finished loading, I disconnected, very scared. I didn't want to go back towards that tank, but I took a deep breath and just remembered that I had to walk and close the tanks and just ignore it. Well, as I did, I noticed that it was no longer standing there because, <laughs> of course, you had to look. I noticed that it wasn't standing there anymore, which gave me a sense of relief. As I finished packing up and putting all of my equipment away, I had to walk even further into the darkness to go put my ticket in the mailbox or receipt for my job. As I was walking back, I noticed that there was a little moonlight that was bouncing off of the ground, or at least the snow, and I noticed that were footprints in the snow leading away from the location. After I threw that ticket in the mailbox, I jumped in the truck, and I went to go find the nearest person that I could, and the rest of my shift, I prayed. So working in the oil field, especially on tribal lands, it has its moments, but again, I think you guys did the right thing, turning on all your work lights, and just ignoring it. I'd actually like to take time to thank our number one sponsor here on Scary Stories to Tell from the Res. Alright, now let's get back to the scary stories. Now I'd actually like to go back to Corey Francis Milford's stories that he sent in. Now he sent in quite a few of them. And I figured that if I broke them up and saved them for each episode, I figured it would give us a little more content to talk about. One of the scariest stories is the one that I held back. And I'd actually like to tell you that story. So according to Corey, Corey's story, 
A sister-in-law from one of my older cousins once saw a half-man, half-goat-like creature. She was described as opposed to a two-legged sitar-looking goat man. It had the full body of a goat, four legs in all. Where the goat head was supposed to be was instead the torso of a man, like a centaur, but instead of a horse body, a goat body. She was home alone at her family's trailer. At the time, they lived in Lupton, Arizona, just off the I-40 by New Mexico. She was watching TV when the dog started barking. Turning the TV down to listen, she heard the locked back door of the trailer open down the hallway across the kitchen to the back rooms. Looking that way, she heard something with hoofs walking down the hallway toward her. Eventually, it came into sight. It just looked at her. As she looked back at it, she was speechless and scared out of her mind. It then just turned around and walked back out the door. She would later tell her grandmother what she saw, and her grandmother told her that, that she knew of it, and that it was occasionally seen by the locals. And, as usual, the elders just said, Don't bother it. Just leave it alone. And to burn cedar to keep it away. Thanks, Corey. Now, this story has me really rattled because, clearly, to see a creature like that is very disturbing. It's enough to make you think about what it is you're looking at. And from the description, it reminds me a lot of the deer lady. Just because the entity itself was female. However, the deer woman usually presents herself to people that hurt women or kids. And she's usually described as being a lot taller. With two legs as opposed to four. My next thought could be a shapeshifter or skinwalker, which are very prominent down there in the Navajo Nation area. Another creature that it sounded like or that I could think of was a Wendigo, but they are usually located in the northern areas of the United States or the Great Lakes area. And whereas this story takes place in the New Mexico area, it's probably pretty unusual that, that it would be that. But it made me really think about the legend of the goat man. We even have one here, and we've talked a lot about it amongst each other here. But it reminds me of the actual goat man legend. The story actually goes all the way back to the old Alton Bridge, that's better known as the goat man bridge, which is located all the way up in Texas. It's an iron truss bridge that connects the cities of Denton to the Copper Canyon. Now, the legend of Goatman says that it's to be haunted by a half-man, half-goat-like creature called Goatman. Now, the belief is based on the legends of a black goat farmer named Oscar Washburn, who is said to have moved his family to a residence just north of the bridge. A few years later, Washburn, having known, become known as a dependable and honest businessman and dubbed the Goatman by locals, displayed a sign on Alton Bridge reading, this way to the goat man. But the success of the black man was still unwelcome to many. And in August of 1938, Klansmen and the local government crossed the bridge and kidnapped Washburn from his family. They hung a noose on the old Alton Bridge. After securing it around his neck, threw him over the side. When they looked down to see if he died, the noose was empty. In a panic, they actually returned to his family home and slaughtered his wife and children. Now, part of the legend goes on to say that if you cross the bridge at night without headlights, as the clansmen were said to have done, you'll be bent on the other side by the goat man. Ghostly figures and strange lights are also said to appear in the surrounding woods, as well as reports of visitors being touched, grabbed, and having rocks thrown at them. But that's just a little bit about the legend of goat man that exists in Texas. And I figured that that was kind of a legend that I would like to talk about. All right, as we start to wind down the episode tonight, I'd like to finish off with our last story of the evening. It was submitted to us on Facebook through one of my TikToks that I put out there. Now, again, and I, but don't let me know whether or not you want your name on there. 
I usually tend to just tell the story and keep your name anonymous. So anonymity is always guaranteed whether you want it or not. But if you'd like to keep your name on it, I'd love to put and give the credit to the story. And all I ask is letting me know what reservation it was. Now with that being said, I'd like to finish off the episode by telling a story from the Blackfoot Reservation. Now, how do I tell you my scary story regarding Depot Coulee on the Blackfeet Reservation near Browning, Montana? This story involves me and my honey. I just got off of work. I was working at Glacier Peaks Casino. It was about midnight when we started to hitchhike back to Heart Butte. Because I didn't want to spend the night in town, my honey agreed to hitch a ride home. So we took a shortcut through Depot Coulee. We almost made it to the fence that you have to cross before you get back onto the highway that's next to the railroad tracks when we spotted something off to the right of us. It had a real long neck and a very long body. Instead of walking or whatever, this thing was floating. Because when we see this thing, I got so effing scared, I bust into full on sprint and ended up passing up my husband. He grabbed my backpack and says, wait, don't run. Don't let it see you scared. That's when I looked back at the thing again. Like I said, it floats because it was right at the fence without even moving. Long necked, long bodied thing. We cross the barbed wire fence and go to the tracks, thinking that the encounter was over while standing there and discussing what we were going to do. When all of a sudden my husband says, ouch, Something just scratched me on the back and it burns. I look at his back and sure enough, there were three long scratches on his back. We decided to turn back and go back to Browning, but not through Depot Coulee, again thinking that this entire thing is over. So we started to walk on the highway when we hear something whistling and hoof prints walking behind us and rocks or little pebbles being thrown at us as we walked. My husband says, don't look back and pray. The whole time we hear hoof prints behind us, we reach the stop sign that leads you into Browning. We hear whistling and a little pebbles being thrown at us. And finally, our ordeal was over. I don't know what that thing was, but it was pretty effing scary. I was always told that Depot Coulee is haunted. Didn't believe it. But now, I don't doubt it. This tale is 100% true, and it comes from a Blackfeet reservation. Thanks so much for that story. It makes me really wonder what it was that you guys seen. Usually apparitions like that tend to just watch. Or when you walk into their area, they tend to try to scare you off from wherever it is you are. Almost like you're disturbing their area. But the fact that your husband got scratched tells me that it probably was a little bit more malicious in its intent, almost mockingly wanting you to turn back. Well, I'm glad that you guys survived the ordeal. Makes me really afraid to go to that town. Trust me, if I'm going, <laughs> I'm taking my car, along with a full branch of cedar, sweetgrass, and just for extra protection, a vial of holy water. Well, that's going to do it for this episode tonight. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and coming to sit down with me tonight, right here around the campfire. I want to say thank you to everybody that showed us love and support and sent in your stories. Don't forget, guys, you can send in your stories at scaryresstories at gmail.com. You can also submit through the Facebook page as well. You can find us at Scary Res Stories or Scary Stories to Tell from the Res right here on Facebook. I want to apologize for last week of not uploading the episode. Like I said, we had some technical difficulties. I've gotten a new computer, so that's why it's taking a little extra time. So as an added bonus for Scary Res Story Saturday, I'd actually like to upload one bonus interview episode with rapper Justin Sane Native and hear his tale in his paranormal encounters. 
both on the road and throughout his life of what he's been doing. With all that being said, I want to thank you all again tonight. And as we end the show tonight, I'd like to end it like we always do. By burning some sage to cleanse off your path. May the creator watch over you and bless you. So that way you can continue on in a good way so nothing follows you home. I want to say thank you again. And may you all stay safe, stay blessed. But most importantly, stay scary. Scary Stories to Tell from the Res is a Lone Bear Productions. <laughs>